One will live, and one will die. Tandy and Tyrone see what could have been in Season 1, Episode 6 of Marvel's Cloak and Dagger, so let's find out what happened. <laughs> What's going on you lovely people? Lisa here and welcome back to another episode of What Happened right here on my channel. Be sure to subscribe and hit that thumbs up if you haven't yet because I am here all the time breaking down some of my favorite TV shows. So this week's episode of Cloak and Dagger is called Fun House Mirrors mainly because Tandy and Tyrone see the lives that could have been had this big tragic accident not happened. Once again we also had the city of New Orleans playing a big part as its history and talk about how the city always rebuilds and is full of fighters is brought up. It always survives. We are also introduced more to Mina Hess, the daughter of Ivan Hess who we saw last episode. Plus, O'Reilly decides to play quite a dangerous game with Connors, so let's break it all down. First, we have Tandy, who's decided she wants more information about Ivan Hess, who worked with her dad, so she pretends to be a girl named Liz, Mina Hess's new intern. Mina lives in her own unique little place in what looks like an abandoned amusement park, where she grows plants, bakes cookies, and, well, works to keep whatever special crazy liquid that burns hotter and better than oil from seeping out and destroying kind of this town. As Tandy tags along with Mina, she keeps trying to ask about Mina's dad and also still tries to keep who she is a secret. Unfortunately, Tandy seems to know a bit too much about Mina, Ivan Hess, blueprints, and such that things start to smell a bit fishy and no, it's not just the water they're wading in. Tandy's knowledge does prove to be useful though because she saves the day and lets Mina know that the valve that's malfunctioning was actually built in the wrong spot according to the blueprint and the maps. And all of this is because of the douchebag named Stan who decided to cut some corners. Tandy gets back at him by, well, slashing his tires with her light dagger. Tandy, though, continues to push too far for information about Ivan Hess, and that's when Mina finally calls Tandy out. She knows that Tandy is, well, not Liz, but Tandy, Nathan's daughter, and she says that Tandy is not that great of a liar. That's interesting considering Tandy's made a whole career of conning people by lying. We then see Mina bring a batch of the cookies that she's baked to a nursing home where her father is and he's alive and awake but he's pretty much in a vegetative state but you can hear him humming something over and over. Tandy shows up because well not only is she a liar she's also kind of a stalker and she apologizes to Mina and Mina says you know what if Tandy had just told her who she was and told the truth she would have actually taken Tandy to see her dad. Tandy's basically like oh crap. Crap, you mean telling the truth can actually get you what you want and work? Yeah, it seems like she's been lying for so long that she forgot that telling the truth was even an option. Tandy tries to talk to Ivan and she touches his hand and sees some kind of door, but when Tandy gets close to the door, she kind of gets a zap. This darkness that we usually see around Tyrone kind of slaps her hand away and Tandy wakes up. Tandy then tells Mina that she thinks she knows someone who can help her get through to Ivan. And yes, you guessed it, it's gonna be Tyrone because, well, he's doing some stalking of his own in this episode and that whole little dark cloud of power, whatever. Yeah, they gotta team up for this one. Now while Tandy was trying to play Mina, Tyrone is trying to play Dwayne, and I apologize because I my hearing is not that great sometimes, and I thought last episode they kept calling him Wayne, so I called him Wayne in my last recap, but his name is in fact Dwayne. Anyway, Tyrone goes to see Dwayne to try to get work for him because he knows that he is working with Connors, and that's kind of his in to bring down Connors. But Dwayne's basically like, you don't want this life, you can do better than this, and that he thinks Tyrone will find the right path for him in time. Tyrone then sees one of Dwayne's dealers or runners leave with a red backpack, so Tyrone decides to follow that kid. But the kid is onto him, slams Tyrone against the wall, and threatens him with a gun to his head. So Tyrone decides to ask Tandy for some advice, and Tandy tells Ty that maybe he needs to create his own openings and basically use his power to help himself. Something that we actually saw Tandy about to do when she was going to touch Mina Hess's hand as they were talking but B. Arthur interrupted and Tandy decided she couldn't use her power in a bad way this time. So Tyrone takes Tandy's advice and decides to go spy on the kid again. During this time, we have Detective O'Reilly who has been doing her best to force Connors out of the shadows because she knows he's dealing these drugs thanks to Tyrone and her booty call cop, whose name is Fuchs, he tries to warn her that she is playing a very dangerous game, but O'Reilly ignores this and ends up getting what she wants as Connors takes notice of what she's doing and decides to ride along with her because you know what, you keep your enemies closer, right? Connors goes on a ride along with O'Reilly and they comb the streets as O'Reilly is trying to find out who this big dealer is. When they're out for a ride, they see Dwayne's kid with the red backpack and pull over, sending everybody running. This kid drops the backpack and when O'Reilly tries to go find it because she thought she saw where it went, it's gone because Tyrone was quick enough to snatch that bag up. 
Connors then corners the runner kid and beats him up, telling him to give a message to Dwayne that he wants to meet. Then back at the station, Connors tells O'Reilly that he is a guy they can meet up with to try to get some information that night. Now that Tyrone has his backpack and he's used his powers to see the other kid's fears causing that kid to leave Ty alone, Ty brings it back to Dwayne and uses it as, you know, kind of a way in with Dwayne. And Dwayne finally agrees to take Tyrone around to see if this is the life he really wants. Now as Dwayne is talking, he lets it slip that he knows Ty jumped into the water after Billy and Ty can't hold it back anymore, all the information he knows. And he calls out Dwayne for working with the cop that killed Billy instead of backing Ty up and taking a better route and even like taking down Connors back in the day. Ty even goes so far as telling Dwayne that he just keeps killing Billy day after day with what he's doing working with Connors. Ouch, right? Connors then knocks on the door so Tyrone pretends to leave out the back as Connors walks in to let Dwayne know that they have a problem. And in five minutes, O'Reilly's gonna be walking through that door and she is that problem, so Dwayne needs to shoot her dead. Ty tries to call O'Reilly to warn her, but she ignores his call and walks in and gets her shot off first, shooting Dwayne as Ty lets out a scream and runs and Connors hot on his tail. In the alley, Connors keeps trying to shoot at Ty and Ty keeps actually avoiding these shots by doing little mini teleports because yeah, I guess it's not his turn to die yet and his powers are activating to try to save him. Eventually, Ty disappears and ends up back in the church where Tandy is and he breaks down. But because of their powers wanting them to be together but also keep them apart, when Tandy goes to try to comfort Ty, yeah, she can't get too close to him. Also through this episode, we have Avita and her Aunt Chantel back in the picture. You see, Aunt Chantel has been having this bad feeling that something big is going to happen, and somehow it is connected to Ty and his power. So she's trying to figure out what's going on, and Evita is her connection to Ty. They basically discover that destruction of some sort is on its way, and it's very reminiscent about what's happened in the past over and over in New Orleans, and it's going to be up to this divine pairing to stop it. And of that pairing, one will survive and one will die. Yeah, kind of ominous, right? And they know that Ty is one half of this pairing, so now they're sitting there wondering who the other half is. And thus ends the main events of this episode. So, uh, shout out to the show for giving us a fun little Golden Girls reference too, because I love the Golden Girls, and they named that B in this episode, B Arthur. But yeah, it seems like Tandy may have an ally in Mina, and she may get some answers she needs from Ivan if they can crack into his head or make him come back alive, break him out of whatever kind of coma thing that he is in. Because he seems to know a lot about what is going on, as well as Mina. She knows a lot about those chemicals, and it seems like that could be the chemical that was in the water that gave Tandy and Tyrone their powers the night of that explosion. But whatever that stuff is, it seems like it's running under the city, and Mina Sokol has it in control, but I feel like there's going to be another other problem here and this stuff could blow up and cause trouble. I'm also just kind of waiting for Liam to pop up and ruin everything as maybe he's going to try to get revenge on Tandy because he seemed pretty bitter the last episode and I think he's been set free right in exchange for giving O'Reilly the information he needs and I think he's a series regular so he's got a pop 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 pack up sorry at some point because there's only like three or four episodes left in this first season. And that Fuchs cop guy, not really sure if I trust him either, even though he is trying to warn O'Reilly that she's basically playing with fire here. And now we're also probably going to have Tyrone feeling guilty once again, even more so now that Dwayne has been killed, it seems like. And Dwayne was basically his only backup when it came to what happened the night that Billy died. So now Tyrone's going to have to figure out another plan to try to bring down Connors because he was going to try to use Dwayne and that business to do it. For now, though, let's check out the promo for the next episode. One. Two. Three. Where are we? Important question. Are you here to kill me? No. Splendid. What's happening? What always happens? Bang. 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 And it just repeats. It repeats. How many times? <laughs> you need to snap out of it. You've lost your mind. All right, looks like we will be stepping into the mind of Ivan Hess, and it's going to be kind of like Groundhog's Day because it seems like he sees the same vision over and over and over, and it looks like uh, Tandy and Tyrone are going to be the key to making, maybe breaking that whole cycle and maybe waking up Ivan. But that wraps up this week's episode, y'all, of Cloak and Dagger. So let me know your thoughts on this episode down in the comments below. Do you think Mina will be an ally for Tandy? Is she actually on the good side? How should Tyrone go about getting Connors now? Will O'Reilly get uh, brought down by Connors as well? Who's going to get there first when it comes to this Connors guy? Tyrone 
or O'Reilly. Let me know all your thoughts and feelings about this episode, and then you can hit that subscribe or thumbs up if you haven't already. Click right over here then for some of my latest videos, and uh, I'll be back here again rambling, sitting in this chair. I'm Lisa. Thanks for hanging out with me. See you next time.